Hey guys and girls, we're back. This is Martin from How to Make Mobile Games and continuing on from the last video for the Pong style game inside of Unity. So the last thing that we did was that we added this score uh, score counter that goes on as the game continues. So over time the score ticks up and up. And I think the last thing that we did as well was we also recorded a high score and allowed that to stay on the main menu screen so that whenever the player comes back into the game they can see their high score and then they can try and beat it and so on which is always good fun. So the next part that we're going to do today is we're going to make things look a little bit more pretty because so far it's it's pretty plain. I mean we've got the these sort of grey walls and then a grey ball and a grey paddle and just a plain sort of blue background. So I'm just going to give you some some ways to make things a little bit more pretty. The, now there are other techniques that are obviously outside of what I'm going to show you guys today but this is a fairly um, quick and easy way to make things look just a little more interesting and it introduces things like particle effects which can make a game look great when you see things like smoke and fire and and, and uh, water effects these are particle effects within a game and they they make things look really really cool so we're going to use that a little bit the uh, the thing I'd just like to point out with with the unity that I'm using right now this one is actually version 3.4 so some of the elements that you might see, I think in the particle system, for example, that I'll show you, uh, 3.5 is a little bit different from 3.4. I think in 3.5 they actually added a, um, a new third-party uh, particle system, which can be a little bit different. But I believe it's fairly straightforward. I know Unity, when they do integrate new new third-party elements within into the into the package, it's generally straightforward in terms of how it's, how to do things. And they're fairly intuitive, but so it is. If it is any different, guys, you know the scripting should be the same. But if there's anything different that you see in your version of Unity in 3.5, please check out the scripting. Or not the scripting. Please check out the user guide on the Unity forum, or, or just click on help, and then you'll be able to find find any information that you need on how to use particle systems inside of your version. Okay, so. Um, so let's just dive right in. Let's. Uh, I'm just gonna. I've written down my points here. I've I've run through this this sort of tutorial already previously, and I've I've, un I've deleted everything that I've done, and then I, so I can go back through this. So the first thing is we're gonna make a material folder. So as we know here, this is our project view, which is like the Windows Explorer or the Mac Finder view. And so we're gonna click on create. We're gonna cr click. We're gonna click create. Make a folder, and we're gonna call it materials. Okay. And we're also, just before I forget, we're going to create a folder called textures. And we don't want that to be under there, we want that to be separate. Uh, if you ever need to rearrange folders, what you do is you just left click and hold the folder. Uh, and then if you just want to move it outside of the, the, uh, the parent object here, just click it somewhere in the middle so it shows that line. And it should, if I can do this, it's not letting me do it, it should allow you to just move, there we go. Outside of the outside of the parent object, the parent folder. Okay, so there you go. We've got the textures and materials. Um, what we need to do now is add a new material. So I'm going to do it like right clicking, create, and then go down here to material. And I'm going to call this. Um, I'm just going to call this white square. Okay. And I'll explain in a moment sort of what a material is, just to, just as a rough overview. Okay, I'll just make sure that I'm getting all my points here. And let's make a white square texture. So I'm just going to go into Photoshop, which is my uh, like texture editing or obviously paint program, whatever you want to call it. Click on File, New. And it doesn't have to be big at all, so I'm just going to make it 64 by 64, width and height. Click OK. And it just needs to be a white plain texture that's all we need for the for the purposes of this uh, this video for other things obviously can make very very complicated textures very interesting textures you know for things like characters or environments but the kind of game that we're doing here is focusing mainly on developing the full game so we're not going to go into the, the art side so much uh, but the art side of, of developing games is extremely interesting of course and it's a lot of fun when you do start to get into that so hopefully in uh, in future tutorials we'll find we'll we'll be doing more and more of that. So file save as and I've already got the white square texture in here, which is inside the folder. So I'll I'll just um I'll just direct you to it. So I'm just gonna quickly find this this project inside of my finder browser here. So I'm going into Pong style game, 
uh, which is the which you should have the same folder as this or whatever you may have called it. Go into your assets folder, textures, and then click. And then so I'm just going to save it as white square, and then click save. And it can be a Photoshop file. You don't need to change it into a JPG or a PNG file or anything like that or, or a TGA file. It can be PSD, and then Unity will make that into a native Unity file. And I, I'm not sure which format it is but it can be PNG or JPG but basically it doesn't matter if you import a PSD file so that's why it's great to work with Unity and if you double click on this texture it'll reopen Photoshop for you so you can save all your layers and you don't have to save two separate files so that's a really cool feature so here you can see it's, it's appeared in the textures folder which is great and I'm just going to quickly optimize this um, This uh, I'm not going to explain the optimization too much here but it basically just means that the the texture that we're importing makes it a little bit more efficient, a little bit smaller and a little bit quicker so that the, the frame rate, the draw rate is smoother. And that's really important on mobile devices. Whenever we have big textures or if we ever want things to be a little more efficient, say they're far away and we don't have to have like a lot of detail in those textures, it's, it's very useful to make those textures as efficient and as small as possible. So you'll find that a lot, especially if you've got compl complicated scenes inside of a mobile game. This is very, very useful. And you'll find that once you optimize, your frame rate will increase and you have a lot smoother gameplay. So I'm just going to make the wrap mode to clamp. And you guys can follow along here. Uh, I'm just going to make, I'm just going to go down to advanced for the texture type. We're not going to generate mitmaps. And I won't explain that right now, but just trust me on that one for now. Okay, override for web. I'm going to make this small, real small, for the sake of this tutorial. And yeah, DX, DXT5 should be fine. I'll click apply, and that's made a 1K texture. So you can see we've, we've optimized and we've adjusted the size of the texture. If I click on here and go 512, it won't work because the, tech, the original texture size is only 64 by 64. But you can see here it's gone up to 4K. But we're going to go down to 32 and I'll make it a 1K texture because we're gonna use this texture for our particle effects as well, okay? So in the material section here, if I go up and I click on this white square material, so as a brief overview for materials, now I'm not an artist, so it's a little bit harder for me to kind of explain how this works, I think. I think probably a 3D artist could do a lot better explanation than I can. But uh, a material is, is almost like um, uh, uh, like the how the texture of the of a, of a surface looks like. So for example, let's just take this, I'm touching my beard here, so I'll give an example. So if uh, a material is almost, is almost like the the texture of, of, the, uh, of the skin, and therefore when light hits my skin, you can see the different, the different textures, um, for example, the pores, the hairs, and so on. Uh, it could be rough, it could be shiny, uh, it could be like wood, it could be, um, I'm trying to think of another example. It could just be like a matte, like sort of like a rubber style of material. And the texture itself, this one here, this white square that we just made, is like the paint that goes on top of it. So for an, another example might be, for example, we've, we've, we've got like a, um, uh, say like a marble, okay? And what we'll do is we want to wrap that marble as just geometry right now. It's just a sphere, okay? If we put our white square on that, it'll just be a plain white, sphere it won't have any kind of shininess or glossiness or any kind of bump to it or anything like that so what we do is if we put a material on there as well which then the material has inside of it has the has the paint which is the texture then that sphere becomes a lot more interesting now it, it now has not only the texture which might be like a, a kind of like ripply wave effect you know like on marbles but it'll also make it shiny as well so whenever light hits it a light in the scene hits it it will shine away so, you know, that's just a very, very brief overview of what materials are. But we can't apply textures to, um, you know, to, uh, to objects themselves. The objects, well, if I do try to apply a texture to a piece of geometry here, like the wall, it automatically creates a material because we need to have a material um, on that piece of geometry. It can't just have a texture. So that's just a very brief overview, and I'll try to go into more detail. I'm just going to delete this um, this uh, material that was just created, and don't worry about this going pink right now. That will that will will change that in a moment. 
So for now, anyway, click on the white texture, drag the sorry the white square material, drag the white square texture into the texture box here. Okay, and for the type of material, we're just going to make it a very plain and efficient one. So we're going to go down to mobile, and we're going to click on diffuse. Okay. And diffuse basically means that the, the material itself doesn't have any kind of extra uh, textures inside of it. For example, if you wanted the skin texture, uh, say like the surface of my hand, what you would have is basically the, the material would contain, say, for example, like uh, the, the, the texture itself, which would be like the color of the hand. But obviously, if I just had that as a plain piece of geometry, then it would look very flat. So you'd also have a bump map on there or some kind of normal map which you'd put inside of the material as well. And that would show all the tiny crevices and, and the, the texture of my hand. And when light shone, uh, shone on it, you could also see like the, the, the indents and all of the different, you know, sort of valleys of the, of the palm of the hand. But in this case, we're, having a very, we're using a very, very simple material because we want to make this fast and efficient. Uh, with mobile games, obviously, like I said, that's really important. So the way to apply this is if I hold on, left click on the white texture, and just drag it onto the piece of geometry that we want to change. This one here, which is the right wall. Then if I click on the, that one, you can see here the white square uh, sh uh, material has been applied at the bottom. And then we're going to do that to the top one as well. Okay, and you can see the little, little plus sign appears whenever, you, whenever it's able to apply that material to a piece of geometry. And then I just let go. So you can see here all the walls have now got the the white square material on there. But the problem is, as we can see in the game scene, everything at the moment is still grey with a blue background. Okay. So the way that we're going to change that is we're going to go to Edit, Render Settings, and then change this ambient light by left-clicking and then going to White. Okay, and there we go. So the ambient light setting is basically the global illumination that surrounds the entire scene. It doesn't come from any direction or any point like the sun or like a spotlight or something. It's just the global illumination inside of the game world, okay? So we're going to make that just white. 